One of the most intriguing and terrifying creatures in the sea is the shark. Encountering this flesh-eating fish is a diver's worst nightmare. So fishers and divers are cautious. They avoid shark-infested areas, stay alert, and know which sharks are dangerous and which ones are docile. Unfortunately, the typically docile shark is not always harmless, as one seasoned diver is about to learn. We're underway. Okay. Vic okay. Lloyd, his stepson Jim Plumer, and son Brian have been commercially fishing, scuba diving, and spear fishing for over 20 years. They usually head up to sea for five-day trips, line fishing from the boat, as well as spear fishing about 110 feet below the surface. They spear the fish and tie them to a stringer. When they're finished, they bring their catch back up to the boat to weigh and pack in ice. At the close of this particular trip, they decide to move to one more spot and make one final dive before heading back to port. This fateful dive, however, will never be forgotten. Our normal procedure is we'll fish spots and then one diver will dive, so it was Jim's turn to dive and we fished this spot. He was going down check to see if there was any bigger fish he could spear. He wasn't down like three or four minutes, we heard a shot. You know, almost instantly he was on the surface yelling and he said he'd been shark bit. He was bleeding bad. We couldn't get his uh, shoulder to stop bleeding. So we knew we had to do something quicker than coming in here at 10 knots an hour. 458, this is your main for Roger. Be advised a report of a shark attack approximately 31 knots miles east of the St. John Sea River. same time that we responded with the 41, uh, the group launched an uh, aircraft, a helicopter from uh, Station Savannah because 31 nautical miles offshore, Hilo can uh, get back to Jacksonville a lot quicker than uh, the boat can. Once we got offshore, we called up the boat and I was uh, talking to the master seeing if there was any way that they could get um, some vital signs for us. Um, he said the guy was stable, but that he did have a um, flesh missing from his back. All you could do is put steady pressure on it because uh, shark grabbed him. Every time he shook him, it was just new cuts. It was ribbon. It was ribboned up. When we arrived on scene uh, the same time as the Hilo did, uh, they dropped one of their uh, crew members down, the survival swimmer, to our vessel. And then we took the 41 alongside the Reef Raider 2, put Petty Officer Kenny and one person from the Hilo on board and they administered the medical attention that the person needed. He had a good six inch laceration to his upper left arm and about a 12 inch laceration in a half moon shape, you know, a typical bite mark along his back shoulder blade. Probably his shoulder blade stopped the teeth puncturing maybe the back of his lungs. With the type of wound that he had, uh, we determined to put on a battle dressing which is a, a gauze with a cloth backing and it has straps already attached to it so it can be secured tightly to the, uh, to the wound. his vitals and uh, keep him on oxygen and just transfer him to, uh, to more sophisticated uh, medical attention as soon as we could. The Coast Guard transports Jim to the nearest hospital for emergency medical care. It takes over 400 stitches to reconstruct his shoulder with doctors sewing two hours a day for three days. shaking me and swimming me up in the water when he grabbed me. I had my gun in this hand, banging him on the head. And it seemed like forever, but I know it was just a couple seconds. He swam me up the water about 30 foot off the bottom and let me go. 
And when he swam up in the water shaking me, my mask came dislodged and came and sat on the top of my head. So I had to reach up after he let me go. I reached up and grabbed my mask and put it back on and cleared it. And then, because I, I knew he was going to make a big circle and probably come back at me. And as soon as I cleared my mask, he made a big old turn and came back at me. And I had my gun ready. I went to shoot him, and uh, the power head misfired, but it still hit the shark on the end of the head. And he went spinning off, and I dropped everything and just came screaming up to the top of the boat. It was something I had nightmares about for months and months. Wake up dreaming in the sweats and all that, you know. You always got to respect the, the sea and what's in it, you know, because you are in their environment. Five weeks after the attack, Jim went diving in that very same spot. He was able to retrieve his gear, but more importantly, overcome his fear. Despite the trauma, Jim is still an avid diver and spearfisher and sports a tattoo of a shark just above his scars. Don't go away, we'll be right back.